Today on Flipping Science, we're looking at moles, mass, and molar mass. Molin, 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 calculating molin, 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 molin. Sometimes in chemistry you need to be able to find out how many moles of a substance you have in a certain mass of that substance. And to do that we use this equation. So n equals little m on big M. And what that means is the number of moles in a substance is equal to the mass of that substance divided by the molar mass of that substance. This magical triangle down here we can use to figure out one quantity as long as we know the other two quantities. So you need to be able to rearrange this equation into its three possible rearrangements. So making each of the three things a subject of the formula. The first one we have is N equals mass on molar mass, capital M. And we get that by looking at our magical triangle. So the number of moles is equal to the mass of the substance divided by the molar mass of that substance. So that's the first one. The second equation, we can find the molar mass of the substance. The molar mass of the substance is equal to the mass of the substance divided by how many moles of the substance you have. So that's going to be equal to little m on n. You will very, very rarely use this equation. The other main one you're going to use is finding the mass. So you can find the mass of a substance if you know the number of moles and the molar mass. So number of moles times the molar mass. So this one is very useful and this one is very useful. This one we don't use it that often. So let's have a look at how we can use this new formula. So the question says, find out how many moles of carbon dioxide there are in 0.2 grams of carbon dioxide. So uh, first thing you do is you write down what you know. So we know what the mass of carbon dioxide is. That's what I'm saying here. So little m, carbon dioxide. We know that that's equal to 0 0.2 grams because that's what we're told in the question. The other thing we can always find is the molar mass. So the molar mass we can find because we can grab a periodic table and we can find the molar mass of the substance. So in this case, we've got the molar mass is going to be carbon plus 2 times oxygen. So we'll go to the periodic table. So carbon is over here, so it's 12.01. So we have the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01. And to that, we're going to add 2 times the molar mass of oxygen. So we look on our periodic table, we can see the... Uh, Molar mass of oxygen is 16. So 2 times 16. We're going to add that together. So 12.01 plus 2 times 16. We're going to use our calculator to do that. So we've got 12.01 plus 2 times 16. That's going to be equal to 44.01. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide, 44.01. Uh, unit for that is grams per mole. So the next step is to write the formula. So number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Mass is 0 0.2. The molar mass is 44.01. So we go to our calculator. 0 0.2 divided by answer, so we keep all our significant figures in there, equals 4.54 times 10 to the minus 3. So 4.54 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So in 0.2 grams of carbon dioxide, there's 4.54 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of carbon dioxide. Let's look at another example. This one asks, how many moles of copper sulfate are there in 250 grams of copper sulfate crystals? So our first step is to write down what we know. So the mass of copper sulfate is 250 grams. You need to make sure this is always in grams. Uh, next step is to find the molar mass. So the molar mass of copper sulfate is going to be the molar mass of copper. So we need to look on a periodic table. So look on our periodic table, we look for copper and we get 63.55. So it's going to be 63.55 plus the molar mass of sulfur. So we look on our periodic table. The molar mass of sulfur is 32.06. So plus 32.06. And to that, we're going to add 
four times the molar mass of oxygen, so four times the molar mass of oxygen, look on our periodic table and we see it's 16. So plus four times 16, and I'm going to put that in my calculator because I can't do that one in my head. 63.55 plus 32.06 plus 4 times 16 and I get 159.61. So, right, so 159.61 grams per mole. Now, the next step here, we're going to write in the formula. So, number of moles of copper sulfate is going to equal mass on molar mass. So, 250 divided by 159.61. I'm going to go to my calculator. 250 divided by answer. So, I keep all my decimal points in equals 1.56. If we round it off, it's uh, 1.57, so 1.57 mole. So in 250 grams of copper sulfate, there's 1.57 moles of copper sulfate. The last example question we have here, we have to rearrange our equation. It says, how much would 78 moles of calcium carbonate weigh? So first thing again, we write down what we know. So our number of moles of calcium carbonate is equal to 78 mole. Next step, we need to find our molar mass of calcium carbonate. So we look on our periodic table, so molar mass of calcium is 40.08. 40.08 plus the molar mass of carbon, so we look on our periodic table, molar mass of carbon, 12.01. So plus 12.01 plus three times the molar mass of oxygen. The molar mass of oxygen is 16. So three times 16. And we'll go to our calculator and figure that out. So we have 40.08 plus 12.01 plus 3 times 16 equals 100.09. So we have 100.09 grams per mole. Now, we need to write our formula and then rearrange our formula. We're going to be looking for the mass. So if we have, this is our regular equation, we could use the magical triangle or we could just multiply both sides by the molar mass and we'll find the uh, mass of calcium carbonate is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass. So N times big M. Our number of moles was 78. Our molar mass is 100.09, so we're going to put that in our calculator. So answer times 78, and we get 7807.02. So 7807.02, now our unit there is grams. We can turn that into kilograms by dividing this by 1000, and we'll get 7.02. 807 kilograms. So that's an example where we had to rearrange the equation. So on Flipping Science Today, we looked at using the formula which uses the number of moles, the molar mass, and the mass. That's it for Flipping Science Today. See ya.